Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are. Today we're looking at how you can create this custom frame in Canva, like this one or like this one. Now, if you're a long-term subscriber of this channel, you will have seen me do this before in on a Mac and using that. If you've not seen that video and you're using a Mac, I'll put a link down below to that video because there's some other options in there. You might wanna check them out still if you're a Windows user. But this is using Windows or how you can do it using Windows. And it's by using an online platform called PhotoP or PhotoP.com. But let's dive into Canva and get started. For those of you that are new here, my name is Darren Meredith. I'm a Canva expert. It even says so on the badge here. <laughs> New merch that we've been given as a Canva expert. Let's dive into Canva and take a look. Okay, here we are, we're in Canva and all as I've done is I've come over to the Elements tab and I've searched for this silhouette head. I just typed in head in here and then it comes up with a few different head options. And then the other option I chose was this tree. Now there's a few different tree options. If you come on to graphics, there's all sorts of different tree options that you've chosen. I've chosen this one here, which is this item here. Now, all we're gonna do is take these two items and we're gonna create what we want our silhouette to look like. I could just do this just on the head. I could do this just on the tree if I wanted to, but I wanted to combine them and create something a little bit funkier and a little bit more fresh to kind of like give you an idea of how you can combine elements in order to be able to create a custom frame. This frame is slightly different to the frames that you'll see in Canva. That's not this kind of like tutorial. This is kind of like how you can do it using PhotoP and free software. Now you'll see what I have done is I've left a slight gap around the top here and around the bottom and all the way around actually. And that's so that what we can do once we've created this photo frame in PhotoP, far too many photos, but what we've done, once we've created this frame in PhotoP, we'll be able to put an image behind it and it'll give that illusion that it's a photo frame. All we're gonna do is gonna take this, we're gonna come up to the new share option here, and then we're gonna click download. Now mine is page two, so I just want to come to page two, download that, and I'm downloading it as a PNG, and it doesn't have to be a transparent background, that's just gonna confuse the things. So you don't have to have Canva Pro. This can be done with free Canva. However, if you do wanna try out Canva Pro and some of the Canva Pro options, there's a 45 day trial down below. Now, all we're gonna do when we come into PhotoP and it's just photop.com, put a link down below to this. We're gonna come over to file and we're gonna to come to open and then we're gonna locate where we've saved that image to and it's gonna come up and it's gonna be like this, like I see on the screen. Once you've got the image loaded, You'll come over to the side here, you'll see this little magic wand here. And you're just gonna click on that. With that selected, we're then gonna come over and we're gonna click on the, the black area of this. Once you see the marching ants appear, we're literally gonna press the delete key. That's all we're gonna do, press the delete key. And that is the background or the black area of this that has been removed. All you need to do once you've actually deleted the black bit there is you come over to file, you come over to export, export as a PNG. Now once that's saved, all I'm gonna do is then come back to Canva and you'll see once we're back in Canva, we'll come over to our upload section and you'll upload it here into your upload section. Okay, so all I wanna do is click on that and if you click on it, it'll add it to the screen. You may be thinking, hang on a minute, Darren, that's not a photo frame, that's blank. It's just can't see anything on there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this image and we're gonna position this image backwards. Well, there you go. Now all becomes revealed and you can actually now see the photo frame and you're thinking well i need to just crop that image in you just grab the edge and this is why we have that border around the edge so that you can hide the photo all the way behind the actual frame if you like we just need to make sure that it's covering up all at the back if you do want this frame I've used this on a white background, but if you do want to use this frame and change the color of it again, you can come over, select the frame, click on edit image, and I've got it here because I've just been using this. But if you come over to duotone, you come over and you can choose any one of these you want. Once you've selected it, click it again, and you'll get the option to change the color. Now, if I wanted to, I could choose my branding colors. I'm gonna change both the highlights and the shadows to be this, and I just click apply. It has to be intensity one, just click apply and you'll see, it looks like it's got a little bit of a white outline up there at first. If you give it a few moments, that's gonna then disappear. And now you can see I've managed to actually change that. So if I wanted to change the background, I could do, and that's just gonna do that really easily. If I wanted to, I can group these so I don't end up losing the alignment of how I've got it. I can highlight both of them and I can group them. And I can just then position this 
wherever I wanted to. If I wanted to, or if you want to, this is a really good option. I'm going to click on group. I'm going to select the frame on top again. And we're going to come to edit image. And now we're going to create a drop shadow. And I really like this because again, because we've added that border around the edge, if we don't want the actual drop shadow here and around the edge, all I can do is I can come in and I can edit these if I want to. I can offset, I can choose not to offset it, but I want to kind of like choose offset a little bit because that's gonna then give me the chance to come in and crop that back. So I can come in and crop that back a little bit more again and I can crop it in from the edge. If you find out that you can't quite get the positioning correct, you can come in and you can increase the size and that's gonna let you play with that intensity or that edge a little bit more. And you can come in and just refine that. I don't wanna take up too much of your time. So that's how you can create amazing frames, but also add a nice shadow inside to create this kind of like almost three dimensional shadow frame effect. And you can use it either Windows, Mac, whatever. If you can get on a website, you can pretty much use Photopea, I would imagine. So you can probably use this on your mobile if you can do that. You can use it on your iPad or whatever tablet you've got. You'll be able to do that on all of those. Just come to photopea.com and that's how you can remove or remove that alpha mask, it's called. And um, if you do want to know how I did it on a Macintosh or on iOS, then do check out the links down below. And until next time, thank you very much and bye for now.